I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, we, we on the whole are pleased with the results of the vote. Beyond the figures, the vote has demonstrated a watershed a watershed between those who are striving towards peaceful use of outer space and those who are moving towards militarization of outer space. Western countries have today essentially turned out to be isolated at the Security Council. And this is symptomatic. We are deeply, we deeply regret the fact that these Western countries, the members of the Security Council today, did not allow the Security Council to adopt a balanced and so necessary resolution today to keep outer space exclusively for peaceful purposes. In this way today, they have definitively cast aside their masks, they have unmasked themselves, and they have presented themselves as they truly are today before us. Just Last month, that the United States and their allies, um, with uh, their inherent cynicism, were, were beating their chests, loudly proclaiming their commitments to peaceful outer space. And today, after they confirmed and showed their real intention to continue to militarize outer space and to continue to develop the relevant weapons, what is particularly cynical and hypocritical are their attempts to justify their actions with the allegedly non-consensual nature of our draft. Not to mention the sudden awakening of their recognition of the importance of discussing the question of preventing an arms race in outer space at specialized disarmament fora. For this is the position which they criticized Russia for just a few weeks ago. And today, this, uh, this is, uh, is something which they the Japanese uh, representative tried to then put the ball in our court. However, we all recall that, recall that you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, placed this subject on the agenda of the Council, and the reason for which you did not support a draft today is banal and very simple. You simply wish to keep, uh, maintain your leeway to use outer space for military purposes and to place there, in outer space, any forms of weapons. The so-called explanation from the U.S. representative before the vote I do apologize, but it is laughable, and it does not withstand any criticism. He failed to respond to the main question. The United States wanted to prevent the placement of weapons of mass destruction in outer space. That is included in our text, and it was replicated, it was taken from your draft resolution, that of the United States and Japan. Please explain why can you not accept a ban, a prohibition on the placement of all other forms of weapons in outer space. And uh, as for the rest of you, please, uh, to, to, for the rest of you who voted against our draft, essentially, you didn't have anything to add to the conversation today. Distinguished colleagues, we call upon all of you to consider the consequences uh, that residents of Earth would face in the event of militarization of outer space and the likelihood, the probability of the scenario as uh, the United States once again and allies once again demonstrated is unfortunately these, the likelihood of this is becoming all the more real. We did not conceal, we do not conceal that the conduct by Western countries of active militarization and exploration of space is something which is of deep concern to us. Suffice it to read the regularly published reports from their specialized agencies, and these reports name these actions and call them self-defense, and they are underpinned with generous uh, 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 premises. And at the same time, nobody other than the United States and their allies proclaimed uh, outer space a theater for military action, nor they're placing their offensive combat systems and military systems there. Today, we have heard from Western countries a great deal of hypocritical words and uh, characterizing both the draft resolution as well as our intentions, as well as blatant lies about the working methods on uh, the work methods of work on the draft resolution, where we can 
held consultations, we gathered written comments, and we repeatedly extended silence at the request of delegations. At the same time, through today's vote, today's vote was a defeat for all of those who, like the Russian Federation, are trying to avoid a confrontation uh, leading to a conflict in near space orbit. Of course, the situation which has unfolded will require analysis and uh, steps undertaken by our side. At the same time, the Russian Federation will remain committed to our obligations in outer space pursuant to international law. And incidentally, this is something which uh, the U.S. representative rightly referred to. We repeatedly reaffirmed and continue to reaffirm our obligations. Despite the aggressive uh, stance of the U.S. and allies, we will continue to work proactively along these lines, and we will spare no effort alongside uh, rel uh, relevant U.N. member states uh, to keep uh, space peaceful. Thank you. I thank uh, the representative of the Russian Federation for their statement.